Welcome back and good evening or good morning or whatever time it is when you watch this video. Um, this is again another exercise case and uh, this case as sometimes cases do, probably as some cases already did, also contains some new details where we probably have not yet spoken about. Let's uh, have a look at what happens. Um, a J from Jülich, which is in North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany, and which you don't need to know if you don't live at Jülich, or if you are not interested in German history, or if you just don't know it, you need, don't need to visit it. However, probably a nice city. J from Jülich now got an order from a customer in Calais, France. That customer ordered the machi a machine for 200,000 euro. The customer came, carried the machine home to Calais himself, uh, probably with a truck. Uh, however, during the travel, the customer stopped at Hamburg. There he knew some special um, craftsmen or so and said, knock on the door. Here's a machine. I bought it. I want some changes. Please do some works on this machine. So that work is um, painted in a different color. Some details are changed. Some things are made better, installed or so. And then the machine in its final shape and state, uh, state is carried across the border to France and so arrives at Calais. Now the um, problem is the machine is not which crosses the border is not perfectly identical with the machine which was bought in Jülich. So the question naturally is, does the machine which was delivered at Jülich um, still constitute an inter-community delivery? So can one still says this ma say this machine was bought in Jülich and then brought to Calais so that it can be an inter-community delivery? That is what we have to find out here. And that's the red question. However, naturally, we need to give a complete solution as always with value in the text. So the first question is here again, what happens here? So we have the sale of a machine in its original version to see the customer from Calais. Then still on German territory, that machine is slightly changed, different colors, some modifications, and then it's carried over the border to France by the customer. So the question here is, can we still say, that our original machine here, the white one, was carried over the border, even in a different form. And, um, well, that's a dramatic problem. However, as many dramatic things in life, there is a clear solution here. Uh, for that, we have an explicit statement in 6A1. Uh, the good which was delivered can be transformed, changed, or modified by the customer before it crosses the border, then that still counts as delivered and transported into another member state. The decisive thing is the substance of the good, um, even if it goes into or becomes a part of another good, is transformed or is shifted over the border. And, um, I can tell you a similar problem do you also have when you export something to third countries. For example, when you buy wood and um, then go to a carpenter still in the inland and uh, tell the carpenter, please uh, make some furniture from that wood. Then the wood can still be regarded as exported if it is later transported across the border. The only thing you need to do is you need to be able to prove it. So we have statements on like these in both rules, 6 and 6a, export and inter-community delivery. However, you should not simply believe me that, we should look it up so that you have seen it once in the text. So I promised you to show it, uh, show you that sentence in the case of exportation to third countries. Here we have it. Um, we have here in the first sentence the list of conditions which or possibilities which can be an exportation to a third country and then in sentence two the clarification or the statement at least 
Before the exportation, the good may be worked on or processed by others. Possible. So now let's have a look to the parallel statement in 6a. Now here's 6a and and the last sentence here, that's after number four. We have here also a second sentence. The good may be worked on or processed by others before the transportation into the rest of the community customs area. So same statement. So that seems to be clear. It doesn't hinder the treatment as an inter-community delivery that our machine is um, undergoing some additional works or process is, is processed in a certain way before it changes the border. So great. So we know that and can go on with our case solution. Then um, domain one, the just underline that these changes must be made by the customer because if the changes are still made by or on behalf of the deliverer, then the finished product exists only at the moment when the last changes have been made. Then we don't have that question. So furthermore, you also um, probably want to know if it makes a difference that here or not the deliverer brings the good to Calais, but the customer does it. And the answer is no. Whenever you have a movement of a good from uh, the one place to the other, it is a movement of the good in connection with the delivery, irrespective of who does it. So if the good after the purchase is moved by the deliverer from uh, Germany to Calais, that's sufficient. That is an inter-community delivery then. So we may reasonably now assume that we can solve this case uh, according to the rules for inter-community delivery and inter-community acquisition on the other side. So in Germany, we have taxability for the deliverer, probably a yes, because it's a delivery. And the place of delivery is where the movement of the sold good begins. That's the machine before it is change that begins at Hulich. So there is the beginning of the transport or movement. Uh, so the place of delivery is in the inland. All the other conditions are also fulfilled. Entrepreneur as a seller acts as such and for consideration. So it's taxable on the one one number one. Uh, is there a tax exemption? Yes, we have to check inter-community delivery. Number one, the good crosses the border. However, in a slightly modified form. That doesn't matter. We have seen that just now. Number two, the customer is an entrepreneur and acts as such. Number three, the customer is subject to acquisition tax in another member state. Yes, there will be acquisition tax in France. Um, and the AT identification number is probably used. That's the usual assumption which we can probably make if the customer is not a complete idiot. Uh, because a French entrepreneur will have a French value added tax identification number. So we don't need to have any doubts here. Probably they all have an ID number of their own state. Doubts are only justified if, let's say, a French let uh, buy something and has it sent to Spain or something like that. Uh, but here that everybody probably has a VAT identification number of his own home, home country seems to be plausible. So we have an inter-community delivery tax-free under 4 number 1B if the recapitulative statement is handed in correctly. Tax base is 200,000. Tax rate and tax that we don't have that thing. Taxpayer, so responsible for tax obligations. Here is no payment, but the duty to hand in the tax declaration and to give proofs for the tax exemption. That is on the deliverer. Uh, the rest, let's forget about that for simplification. It's always the same. The right to input tax is still um, upheld for raw material and other things, in spite of the fact that our deliverer, uh, Jay from Julich, has a tax-free output. You know experts and intra-community deliveries, although they are tax-free, still entitle the seller to full input tax deduction. That is the great exception. The treatment of the French side. We have somebody who acquires a good which comes from Germany. We don't need any clarification that works can be done before the 
the borders cost because the black in our sketch the black machine so the machine in its fully finished status is brought by the customer in the course of an of a purchase over the border that's sufficient to trigger the rules the good goes from germany to france yes the buyer is an entrepreneur c from calais yes can be supposed seller J from Julich is also evidently an entrepreneur and acts not as a small entrepreneur, so it's an inter-community acquisition. Now we have to find out in which country, in the inland of which country, the place of acquisition is 3D, sentence 1, where the transport ends, that's in Calais, so it's taxable in France, and the 1-1 one, one, number 5. Do we have a tax exemption here? You have for acquisition tax, again, to keep in mind, that the rule is 4b not paragraph 4 and that as nearly always no rule applies so we have no exemption but full liability to tax tax base is a net amount 200,000 the tax rate is a french one the formal aspects are determined according to french law naturally one thing is clear throughout the whole eu the acquirer or in plain words the buyer of the good is the person who has to pay the acquisition tax so that's C from Calais. We can give, give a reference to the German law as an indicator of what will happen. Naturally, as this is taxable in France, correctly, you would need the corresponding French rule. However, we can't learn everything. So we just do it by analogy, applying our German rules to the situation there and hoping reasonably hoping that there will be no difference. Input tax, well, acquisition tax can always entitle to input tax if you don't do things which spoil the right to input tax, let's say, if you don't use it for tax-free output, um, that's probably what you don't do. And so, congratulations, case is done and finished. So, enough for today. Thank you for watching. Till next time.